Okay, with the printer unpacked, we're gonna take the materials out of the build plate and we're gonna take the little pieces out that are holding the, the head from moving while it's shipping before we turn it on. I'm gonna leave the, the actual sheet of plastic covering the screen as well as the logo here on until I'm done unpacking just to make sure that nothing happens to them. But we're gonna first open the front door and in here we have build plates that are in boxes and they're, they're zip tied down to the build um, the, the stage here. So I'm gonna cut this with some scissors zip tie in here so it can be a little bit painful to get in there and cut it and uh, you may have to cut it in a couple places to get it all the way out. I'm going to pull this out, pull this out, give myself some more room. I'm going to take the foam out that's covering the back protecting the machine from the materials that were shipped on it and sometimes you can pull this out but more times than not you have to actually cut it again. And uh, there's generally, there's another one of these sitting under there, so it's difficult to actually just pull it right out. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get in here. Actually, yes, sometimes you can just reach under there. So I'm going to cut this one off instead. Top, and I can reach under the bill plate and pull it out and pull the second one out. So that's an easy way to get it out. Now, you can only open this top door with the front door open. So the front door is closed, the top door is locked. So I'm going to open the front door, and I'm going to open the top door. And there's a couple things in here we need to pull out. But first, inside the build chamber, you're going to see a, a piece of orange tape. We want to peel that out. So inside, we've got a piece of orange tape here we need to peel back and then when we look up in the top you're gonna to see the head is secured by two yellow or orange zip ties so these need to come out so we'll carefully cut those okay so we've got the first one cut we're gonna cut the second one here and both of those done peel both of pull both of these out and we don't want to leave any remnants in here you can see this one piece is still there so I want to make sure anything orange is basically the rule of thumb if you see some zip ties that are orange and those or tape that's orange that's supposed to come out so now I've got everything out of the machine that needs to come out the head can move freely so that's critical you need that to be the case before you turn it on in some machines, there, there would be a, a silver clip here holding the belt, but I think they may have just changed that to two zip ties. Instead, they used to just have one zip tie here and a clip across the belt. But in this machine, it was two zip ties. So just double check that you may, your, the way they secure your head may be slightly different than what I just saw here. Okay, so with everything that secures the machine while it's in transport removed, we're ready to get the machine turned on. So I'm gonna close the front door top door and I'm going to open the bottom drawer so they ship the startup kit in the bottom drawer here so we have in this machine these are the PLA heads and in an F170 and 270 you'll get the PLA heads and in an F370 you won't get PLA heads you'll get a TPU head in there so um, we set these aside for now it's a little tricky to get this welcome box out from the front so the best way to do it is to first pull these boxes out kind of have to wiggle them straight up. And this is your starter material that comes So we have QSR support. And this should be a box. This is actually a box of PLA. And this is our welcome kit that we need. So this has all our tools, has our power cords, has Ethernet cables, USB cable, or USB drive, all that good stuff. I'm going to open this up. So inside this box, we've got a power cable. We're going to need that right away. 
you should have these large Ziploc like bags. These are actually for storing material that's been opened. So the material is obviously sealed when you open a new box, when you cut that open the first time. You're not gonna be using the material for a while. Unload it from the machine and put it in one of these. Press as much air out as you can, or you can even throw some more desk packs in the bag with it. The material has a desk pack in the middle of the spool, but it doesn't hurt to have extra, extra desk in the bag with this, especially if it's gonna be stored long-term. So we've got that in here got our loop, so this is actually used in calibration, which we'll get to later. And all the tools I like to store in the back of the material part here. This is for cleaning your touch screen. Usually I open these up and then put them back there. Right now I'm just setting them there. These are snips for actually cutting the material when we unload and load. We've got our introductory information. We've got our European plug, which they have one skew for the entire World, so you, you've got them both in there. A towel, the Ethernet cable if you're connecting to the network, we'll talk about that later. We've got a scraper for pulling parts off the bill play that are maybe a little more stubborn. We've got some pliers in here. USB drive, another set of pliers, and then we've got the gloves that are used for handling the machine when it's hot. So that's everything that's in there. Right now, the only thing we really need out of here is our US plug. So, undo this. Now the back of the printer has your plug, ethernet port, this is a USB port back here, so you can plug in a wireless, um, a Wi-Fi stick, and then your serial number is gonna be on this plate here if, if you need it. There's a couple places where the serial number is. I plugged in, and I'm ready to press the power button. So the power button's right there, the screen's gonna come up. Once you have the printer in place, you actually wanna put these feet down, and they need to be down enough that basically can feel the casters underneath and spin them. So this provides stability while the printer is running and without it the printer is not as accurate. One of the ways that makes it a little bit easy is open this front door and then you can see what you're doing. I generally hand thread these down to the floor until I feel the, um, the foot hit and then it's a three quarter inch wrench to, to tighten it down. And you don't need to lift them up all the way, just enough that each of the wheels you can spin them freely with your fingers. That's enough to, to make it stable. 